Are you thinking of getting a drone? Have you been seduced by the incredible promotional videos that DJI and the other manufacturers post right here on YouTube? Do you have dreams of videoing incredible scenery or amazing events? You do? Well, before you put a sizable dent in your credit card's balance, I thought I'd just add a bit of shade to the saturated, technicolor, wanktastic marketing bonanza of the main drone manufacturers and share some insights with you guys that they don't tell you in the adverts. Now, don't get me wrong, I love drones. I love flying drones. I love taking photographs and shooting videos with my drones. My life is better for having drones in it, but there's two sides to every story. And this, my friends, is the flip side. Like most new drone owners, my first tentative flight took place in the back garden. I got everything set up as per the instructions. I read and reread all the safety rules. I triple checked I'd attached everything correctly and then I hit the takeoff button. It buzzed to life and rose a couple of feet into the air. As it rose above the ground, my heart rate just about doubled and I fiddled with the flight controls in a hesitant fashion before flying the drone up about 20 feet in the air. My poor old heart couldn't stand the suspense for long though and uh, I flew it back down, landed it and carefully packed it back in its flight case before having a stiff drink to calm my nerves. It was about a week before I worked up the courage to try again. Now, I figured that this was just first flight nerves, and so for the next few flights, I headed down to the wide open space of a nearby park. Each time, as soon as it was in the air, my heart rate rocketed. I talked to the missus about my performance issues, and she kindly suggested it was just rookie nerves and that I'd settle into it after a while. Turns out I didn't. Every single time my drone rises elegantly up into the air, I start shitting myself and I don't stop shitting myself until it's back down on the ground and the rotors have stopped spinning. It's even worse when I fly out over water. When it's over land, I can kid myself a bit because I think, oh well, if it drops out the sky, at least I can recover it. But you don't get that luxury when it's out over the ocean. If your drone decides to fly away, as they sometimes do, or a motor fails, or a passing wedge-tailed sea eagle savages it, you're fucked. When I'm flying the drone, occasionally the video feed glitches or cuts out completely, and I shit myself all over again. I once used a non-Apple lead to connect my iPhone to the controller, and it disconnected from my drone while it was 100 meters up and about 300 meters away over the ocean. And I damn near crapped myself then. DJI don't help matters by flashing High wind, land now. Every time there's the slightest fart-sized breeze detected by the drone. So know this, unless you're sufficiently wealthy to not care about sending several thousand dollars flying up into the air where you control it with what might as well be magic, you will shit yourself. Welcome to the team, bring sturdy underwear. <laughs> If you were to attend a dinner party and if, in between courses, you were to climb up onto the dining table, drop your trousers, squat and crimp off a log right there on the table in between the soup and the bread rolls, your steaming surprise would probably still be more welcome than a drone. The cold hard truth is that the only people who don't hate drones are the people that fly them and the junkies in prison who get their crack delivered by one. Why do people hate them? Mainly for a bunch of irrational and or objectively incorrect reasons. But when has public hate ever been objective? I've never listened to any Nickelback songs, but I find it hard to believe they've written anything that really deserves the volume of crap that's been heaped on them for the last decade or so. It's trendy to hate on Nickelback, and it's trendy amongst a certain demographic to hate on drones. When pushed, the keyboard warriors who whinge about drones in community Facebook groups usually suggest that one, they're noisy. Two, they scare the wildlife. And three, they use to spy on people. It's all bollocks, of course. They're only noisy if they're hovering a meter away from your head. Most wildlife can give a shit about drones. 
And they're about as useful for spying on people as a Lamborghini Aventador is for tackling the Cape York track during the rainy season. But do not think for one second that you will ever convince anyone that drones are a force for good, that 90% of the TV shows and films they watch use them, that the emergency services save lives every day using them, or that they've captured amazing imagery of scenes such as close-ups of erupting volcanoes that would otherwise be impossible to photograph because you will not change their minds. <laughs> Yes, everyone hates drones, but you know what they hate more? The folks who fly them. You're a pervert, a spy, a criminal, a wildlife hater, a sad and pretentious geek, and a vandalizing thug. And you will be occasionally approached by people who will let you know all of the above. Middle-aged Karens and Kens in leisure wear, struck by the righteous anger of the deranged and clueless, will shirt front you and tell you exactly what they think of you. Yes, they are Muppets, but try and resist the urge to fly your drone into their face in sports mode. Now, when you first have the idea of getting a drone, you picture yourself using it to capture beautiful scenery and amazing landscapes. What you probably don't picture is a load of paperwork and form filling and a set of regulations that make the rules of the road look like child's play. And to be honest, a few years ago, it was a much easier hobby to enjoy. The rules of the sky that govern what aircraft can and can't do haven't changed much, but the attitude of governments around the world certainly has. So in many countries, you'll now have to meet some Licensing requirements, sit a test of some kind, pay an annual fee and register yourself and your drone. You'll also discover that certain organizations, such as those that are charged with the care of certain parcels of land, both public and private, have banned drones completely. So for instance, the US National Park Service has banned drones in all of its 417 national parks, 23 trails and 60 rivers. Certain state park authorities here in Australia have banned drones outright, as have similar organizations in the UK, Italy, France, Spain, and countless other countries. There are also a whole bunch of rules in every country around the world governing what you can and can't do once your drone's in the air. And of course, there are areas of restricted airspace we can't fly at all. The bottom line is that if you decide to fly legally, it's not as easy as just rocking up at a beautiful location and filming the landscape with your drone. Now obviously this depends on the drone modeling question, but the simple truth is that as they have become more advanced, drones have also become much less robust. You could throw a football at Phantom 3 and it would just shrug it off. Throw a football at one of the modern drones and it'll drop out of the sky faster than Supermite in a kryptonite onesie. Old consumer drones used to be quite modular and easy to repair, but that is certainly not the case now. As the gimbals have become more advanced, the camera's better, and as the bodywork has evolved from glorified scaffolding into spindly legged wind warriors with advanced processes inside them so they have become increasingly difficult to fix. FPV flyers are well used to fixing their quadcopters thanks to a modular design and engineered ruggedness but repairing a Mavic 3 at home is a big ask. So if you do crash your drone and you haven't invested in insurance such as DJI's care refresh package you're looking at an expensive fix by a specialist repair company. It's also entirely possible, given the number of small ads selling drones for parts, that your drone cannot be repaired at all. So I have two bits of advice for this. Firstly, do consider getting some insurance, not necessarily DJI's Care Refresh. And secondly, get used to the idea that you may well go out for the day drone flying and come back with just your controller. <laughs> Drone groups of Facebook are often where drone dreams go to die. On a regular basis, you'll see people advertising their drones to sell. Not, they admit, because they're buying another one, but because it's just been sitting there collecting dust and just hasn't been used. Now, I've been giving this a bit of thought, and I think I know why this happens. 
People buy drones because they think they're cool gadgets and it will be fun to fly them. And when they get their drones, they discover that they are cool gadgets and that it is fun to fly them. But after that initial wow period, they're left asking themselves, what now? There's only so many drone selfies you can take before you lose interest. If it's the pure fun factor you're after, you should get into FPV drones, not standard consumer drones like the Mavic or the Autel Evo. I strongly believe that unless you have some specific purpose in mind for your drone, above and beyond simply owning a cool flying gadget, then your drone will collect dust. That interest might be photography or filmmaking, you might make travel videos or documentaries. You might be a fisherman using your drone to drop bait out beyond the break zone at the beach. Or you might be a member of a drugs cartel using your drone to deliver crack cocaine and burner phones to inmates in a high security prison. People who do not have a specific purpose in mind will probably grow bored with their drone, sell it and chalk it up to experience. <laughs> I'm no conspiracy nut, but the fact is that the authorities here in Australia and elsewhere around the world are increasingly able to scrutinise most aspects of our lives through the technology we have all grown to love. And your drone is unfortunately no exception. Thanks to incidents like the Gatwick drone debacle, companies like DJI cooperated with governments to allow for the scrutiny of drones. With equipment that DJI supply, the authorities can track your drone and its controller and therefore you. If that bothers you, then don't buy a drone. Now, I'm a semi-professional landscape photographer. My definition, incidentally, of semi-professional is someone who treats it like a job, devotes a huge amount of time and energy to it, but makes less than the guy on the French frying machine in Maccas for doing it. But I digress. I got my drone because I like taking landscape photographs and making arty landscape inspired films and also travel films for my other YouTube channel, which I'll link to. I'm also usually on my own. Now, this is partly because I'm autistic and have severe ADHD. That's not an edgy joke. I really am autistic and I don't really do collaborations or, you know, have friends and stuff. But it's also just easier to please yourself and set your own agenda without having to incorporate someone else's requirements into the scenario. What I didn't foresee when I got my drone is I would have to choose between it and my camera. For instance, if I'm out shooting a nice sunset at the beach and I have to decide beforehand if I'm gonna use the drone and when I do, I spend the whole time wishing I could take photos of it with my camera. And when I decide to just take photographs with my camera, I often regret not having the drone in the air. It's a conundrum with no simple solution. Now, I have managed to do both on a few occasions by getting the drone set up beforehand and then flying it for a bit before returning to my camera, but it forces you to rush things and when you rush things, you may mistakes. Getting your drone set up, flying it into position, taking your shots, flying it back, bringing it down, packing it all up, that all takes a considerable amount of time. Regulations regarding things like airspace and rules that mean you can't fly your drone anywhere near people or buildings and stuff has an impact on how much you can use your drone and how much you can get out of it. But the other huge factor is the weather. Rain, snow, strong wind and extreme heat and cold all mean you can't fly your drone. Admittedly, the current crop of consumer quadcopters can handle surprisingly strong winds without too many issues. But Unless you get a splash drone, they're sure as shit not waterproof. They also have a limited operating range in terms of temperatures. For instance, the official limitations on temperatures for DJI's latest drone, the Mavic 3, are between minus 10 and 40 degrees centigrade, or 14 and 104 Fahrenheit for my non-metric friends. And certainly here in Australia, and particularly since our species is in the process of slowly roasting our planet, that 40 degree figure is a bit of a worry. And remember, we're talking about operating temperature here, not just the ambient air temperature. If you work during the week and only get the chance to use your drone at weekends, then the days on which it's possible to fly your drone will be quite limited, particularly if you live somewhere that gets a lot of precipitation, wind, or both. <laughs> Now, 
one of the white lies that people often tell themselves or their partners when they get a drone is that they'll use it to earn a bit of money. The most popular money-making pipe dream is of course real estate photography. Unfortunately, you'll probably quickly discover that your local realtors have been approached by several thousand drone owners over the years and the person in the shiny suit has heard it all before. Realtors tend to use just one person for their aerial photography, usually an established local photographer, and you offering to undercut their pricing will almost certainly not tempt them. If you walk in off the street to offer your drone photography services to a realtor, then that fixed grin with which they greet potential home purchasers will fade quicker than the budget fake tan they've applied to their faces. It's certainly the case around here that realtors have also discovered that flying a DJI drone is really fucking simple. And they've simply started taking their own photos, cutting out the middleman completely. This is ironic, of course, because they themselves are middlemen. Anyway, other side hustles that virgin drone owners imagine they'll earn money from include things like wedding and event work. This is a really hard gig to fight your way into and you will undoubtedly also need expensive public liability insurance, a full drone license with the extended accreditations and a high quality portfolio of prior work before you even get considered for this kind of work. You might feel that the Mavic Mini produces great footage but you'll also need a drone that shoots in a log video format at the very least. Consider also that shooting weddings and events is a very high pressure situation and there are no do-overs. Ask yourself if that's really something you want to put yourself through. All right, guys, those are my 10 things I've known before I got my drone. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that like button down there. And for more of this kind of content, hit the old subscribe button and help me inch a bit closer to 1,000 subscribers and the happy hunting grounds of YouTube monetization. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one. Thank you.